Former ANC KwaZulu Natal Provincial Secretary Ndumiseni Ntuli has been nominated by some branches of the party to be the ANC Secretary General. Now Ntuli has accepted the nomination, however his home province KZN has endorsed Pumula Maswale. Ntuli says he isn't part of any slate and Samkele Masego was in conversation with him. Mr Ntuli, you've been nominated by branches of the party. What new aspect are you bringing to the SGO of the ANC, which has pretty much been in paralysis since your 54th National Conference in 2017? Well, I think, I think the most urgent task that we face as an organization is that uh, we must effectively carry our own with the program of the renewal of the ANC. And in my own view, that program must take into account the fact that uh, the ANC, in a sense, has uh, what I can describe as two twin responsibilities which is that of being the national liberation movement on one hand and on the other hand also being a, a governing party of our uh, you know eight of the nine provinces as well as the national government so the central task that in my own view will have to be undertaken at this stage for instance is to ensure that as a national liberation movement the anc always has its finger on the the pulse of society it understands how to mobilize and organize the different sectors of society, what we call in our own language, the motive forces of the national democratic revolution. But on the other side, the ANC also has a responsibility to ensure that uh, as a governing party, we govern efficiently, effectively. We, we, we have the capacity to generate ideas, to research, to produce new knowledge, but not only to monitor and evaluate what happens in government, but equally the head office of the ANC must be a center that provides a guidance and direction as well as support to the deployed cadres of our movement starting from the president and the rest of the ministers and in all our nine provinces so that is what in my own view is required to reposition the head office of the ANC because I'm saying on one hand you need this campaigning ANC which is always within the the motive forces, forces of the NTR mobilizing them behind the social transformation problem, program of our country but equally activating them to play a meaningful role, uh, not just as spectators, but as participants in the reconstruction and development of our country. You speak about a campaigning ANC. You were the provincial secretary in KwaZulu-Natal. Your province blew up in flames, particularly with the rest of former President Jacob Zuma. There was no leadership that was shown by the ANC at the time in the province. The province went up in flames. People were looting. Where was the leadership of the ANC? And where were you? Where was the Galala during that tenure when the province went up in flames? You see, it's exactly the same thing that uh, the challenge that we need to overcome. It's, it's a perennial problem that is not only defining the state of the ANC in Wazunata. It's a national phenomenon where over a period of time the ANC's capacity to mobilize and lead uh, what we can call grassroots campaign has diminished. So what happened in July and in the manner in which it happened would have been easily avoidable in terms of the ANC as a, a campaigning organization intervening to mobilize society away from what was obviously a very destructive uh, elements that were intending to undermine the economy and to undermine social cohesion in our province, let alone that uh, it resulted into the killing of almost 400 people in the province. If you do not have a campaigning organization, it is easy for anything that happens in society to, uh, to evolve and unfold without being properly and politically guided. And the reason why I'm emphasizing on the need for the ANC not just to celebrate anniversaries of uh, its birth and its founding and its uh, late leaders like President Oliver Tambo, but an ANC that can take up a grassroots campaign, which is a, would be a matter that is of concern to the population in a particular locality and throughout the, the country. So you, what you saw at that time, yes, the ANC intervened, but it was late. At the time when we went out, anyway, it was during the period when we were staying at home, all of us, because of the, the restriction imposed by COVID-19 regulations. But by the time we went out to engage with the structures of the ANC in different parts of the province, it, we could see that uh, had we had an organization that was much more prepared, much more geared towards providing strategic leadership to various sectors of society, the impact of what happened would have been far less. But of course, that was the work of a counter-revolutional agenda. Uh, you, there was no grievance that really can be uh, only limited to the fact that people were not happy with a particular decision of the court. It was also 
part and parcel of an ongoing agenda to undermine the capacity of the organization and to weaken the ANC as a governing party in Bazunata. A counter-revolutionary and who would want to weaken your own party because it's clear that there is huge tension bordering on hatred between your former president and the incumbent president of the ANC. Were you ever caught in between the two at some point? No, no, no. We, we have never, we've never been caught in between the two. You see, when, uh, when we took over the leadership of the province uh, in July uh, 2018, it was uh, essentially a few months after President Zuma had been recalled and charges against him also being reinstated. And there was a, a bit of a crisis in the province, some kind of a pandemonium, because you had that NEC decision evolving from a national conference, which was saying, no, no, nobody must associate with anyone who's arrested uh, except as an individual. But when we were elected, we recognized that without the ANC playing a much more meaningful and direct role to what was happening around President Zuma, we were opening up a space for forces that uh, are opposed to the ANC. And those forces were then uh, ascending to the podium and conveying messages that were not only, uh, you know, challenging the, pres the persona of the president of the ANC, Comrade Ramaphosa, but there were also uh, sentiments that were intended to bring down the Afghan National Congress. We were really not caught up in between, between the two Congress. I don't think that... Uh, uh, there, there was or there is a standoff between the two of them. It was a question of an NEC decision and how that decision has to be interpreted and be evolved on the ground. And our own approach was that the ANC has got one president, and that is President Cyril Ramaphosa, but it also can't turn its, uh, its blind, a blind eye or walk away from the fact that uh, its recent former president is now, who resides and stays in Wazul Natal, is facing challenges as a consequence of which if we don't act in a particular way, such challenges can be exploited by forces who are opposed uh, to the project of social transformation in our country. You look at former President Jacob Zuma now. At some point, he may have viewed yourselves in the leadership then led by Sislezi Galala and yourself of having sold him out, or those who support him may have viewed you as having sold him out. Sislezi Galala, when he resigned as Premier of the province, it is never used former President Jacob Zuma's name to campaign. Three months down the line, after your provincial conference where you lost out to the incumbent leadership, the incumbent leadership now is at loggerheads with former President Jacob Zuma. Is there a view that there may be credence to that former President Zuma's name was used in order for people to be elected, seeing that they have now seemingly dumped him? You see, what I know, what I know as a, as a matter of fact, is that we who were the, the, the apex leadership of the ANC in the province, really never acted or failed to act in a way that uh, would in any way justify a position that we were not supporting President Zuma. Uh, of course, that campaign, we heard about that campaign. I don't know to what extent did it impact, influence uh, the, the minds of the delegates who are attending the provincial conference, but the fact of the matter is that uh, even these comrades who are now in the PEC, the provincial officials, they were part of the provincial executive committee, there is absolutely nothing that we did, myself and, and, and Zigalala, uh, who were both chairpersons and secretaries respectively, uh, that did not have a blessing or a knowledge of the leadership as a whole, so including the comrades who are leading now. Uh, so there were some people in the social media, for instance, who were running a very offensive campaign uh, that these ones have walked away from President Zuma, they hate him, they never supported him. Uh, but we know it, we know, we, we knew then, we know even now that it was a lie. The extent to which that might have impacted on the thinking and the decision making by delegates who attended the conference, I don't know. But, um, and I think, I think the current leadership now, uh, it, it might face the same kind of uh, fate, given the fact that uh, there are people now who are saying they are not listening to President Zuma. I, I don't know what does that mean because I have not been into meetings with them and President Zuma. So I, I wouldn't know what is it that they are now doing or they are not doing which is contrary to what would have been a discussion between them and, and President Zuma. Who should take over as leadership of the ANC in December? Should the incumbent president come back, particularly seeing that there's a dark cloud over his head pertaining to Palapal? I'm comfortable with anyone who would be elected by branches of the ANC, quite honestly. I, I, I do not have a particular person that I'm saying will have to be the one who's elected. Anyone that the majority of branches of the ANC elects in that conference and elects together with me, I can work with that comrade and complement each other to ensure that we deal with the challenges uh, facing the movement. And if it happens that a comrade has got his or 
own challenges. I think the ANC has now been sufficient uh, uh, guidelines and rules uh, to regulate how to deal with circumstances where uh, there are individual circumstances that may be impacting on the leadership role of any of us. Thank you very much. That is Mr. Mdumzeni Ndulu, who is contending for the position of ANC Secretary General, saying that the ANC needs to come out with a clear direction on how to constitute local government through the coalition that we are seeing within the country, and saying that the ANC needs a strategic viewpoint and that they must not be perceived as wanting to reincarnate former President Tabombeg into the leadership of the party, saying they are only drawing from the well of knowledge that comes from the former president.